It's a beautiful summer day, and we are headed into San Bernardino County to the small desert community of Joshua Tree. We have been given the opportunity to be the first to investigate the Joshua Tree Inn. The Joshua Tree Inn has had a reputation of being haunted since one of music's most influential musicians of the late 60s and 70s died there in September 19, 1973, Graham Parsons. Graham was born Ingram Cecil Connors III in 1946 to a wealthy Florida citrus family. Both his parents suffered from depression and alcoholism. Graham's father committed suicide when he was just 12. Graham's mother remarried Robert Parsons, who adopted Graham and his sister. Graham's mother died from cirrhosis of the liver from heavy drinking in 1965. During all of this turmoil, Graham was developing his skills in rock, folk, and in country music. In 1966, Graham and some friends started the International Submarine Band and moved to Los Angeles. Their only album, Safe at Home, was released after the group disbanded in 1968. By this time, Graham was performing and recording with the Birds. Due to legal problems between Graham's former label and the Birds label, a great deal of Graham's contributions to the album Sweetheart of the Rodeo was omitted, but enough remained to show just how influential Graham was to the sound of the birds. Graham left the birds while on tour in England during a summer tour in 1968. While in England, he stayed with Keith Richards of the Rolling Stones. When Graham returned to Los Angeles, he started the Flying Burrito Brothers with the former birds band member Chris Hillman. Their 1969 album the Gilded Palace of Sin was truly the definition of country rock for its time. Graham hated the term country rock. He called it cosmic American music because it encompassed rock, country, folk, jazz, gospel, and all things American. By this time, Graham's drug and alcohol consumption was making him unreliable. Hillman eventually had to fire him from the band. In 1970, Graham started a solo career he recorded two albums with Emmy Lou Harris, Graham Parsons in 1973, which was more of a traditional country album, and Grievous Angel. This brings us to the Joshua Tree Inn. The Joshua Tree Inn is a hacienda style inn built in 1950, just five miles from the Joshua Tree Monument. In the 60s, it was a favorite retreat for members of the rock scene in Los Angeles. Graham Parsons loved Joshua Tree and came here for the solitude. On September 1973, Graham came to the Joshua Tree Inn with some friends to relax and blow off some steam before starting the Grievous Angel Tour in October. He checked into Room 8, which is where he was found unresponsive on September 18th from a drug overdose. Details leading to Graham being found is a little murky. He was declared dead upon arriving at the hospital on September 19, 1973. Room 8 has been considered to be haunted to this day by Graham. Valerie and I will be staying here for two days. We checked into the Joshua Tree Inn and toured the lobby. Graham has become a huge presence here. People still come here to try and get close to the artist. We plan on interviewing employees in the morning, but for now we are excited about getting started with our investigation. So we headed to room eight. So this is the memorial that's been constructed here for Graham Parsons, and people come and leave things quite often. Safe at home, Graham Parsons, um, November 5th, 1946. To September 19th, 1973. And this is um, the room that uh, Graham Parsons stayed in, room A. So we're going to do a, a EMF sweep of the room. It's a very small place, so uh, we don't expect a whole lot. I can see you from this angle. Okay. So the walls are made out of. We started our investigation so with an EMF sweep of the room. Too much EMF stands for electromagnetic field. All living things emit so some EMF. Spirits are said to radiate EMF. They can possibly use the energy from their surroundings to manifest themselves. That's why batteries sometimes drain and people can suddenly feel fatigued. 
We do an EMF sweep of the room so we can see if there are any hot spots caused by appliances. The room was pretty much dead, except for the microwave and refrigerator in the walk-in closet. Did you come here often, Greg? Finally, we set up all of our equipment, and Valerie settles onto the bed, and we start an Echovox session. I have a gray box on the bed right here in front of me. If you come and sit next to the box, it'll light up. Can you do that for me? The Echo Vox was acting strangely. Everything was really clipped and short. It was very difficult to understand what was being said. It wasn't until we got it back home and slowed it down did it start making sense. Here is what we heard at regular speed. Here it is slowed down. We will play it again, see if you agree with us. We continued on with our Echovox session with little intelligible response until Valerie mentions Lucy, Angie's service dog. Graham, do you like dogs? I heard I do. Would you like to meet a dog right now? If you say her name, we'll let you meet her. Her name is Lucy. I have Lucy. We're going to bring Lucy up here on the bed by me. I'm holding Lucy right I'm holding Lucy right now, Graham. Would you like to pet her? Lucy doesn't bite. We just heard a noise at the, the back door. We heard tapping at the back door that opens onto the enclosed patio. When Graham was here, it was the front door. Lucy started growling at the door and continued to stare at it. We will play this part again for you. Is Lucy growling at you? Okay, I'm going to open the back door. We're 
We're going to open the back door. Mm. If you're out there, please come in. No. 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 What? No what? Don't open it. Mm. Back door. I unlocked and opened the door slightly, but closed and locked it again when we heard no come over the echo box. At this point, we don't know who we are communicating with. It could be Graham, but maybe not. What happens next is very strange. What is that? What was that? I that sounded like a conversation, but this, this device is not designed to pick that up. The Echovox is a closed system. It does not pick up radio waves. It creates vocal tones and mix it with the ambient sound in the room using a microphone. The impression we got is that this might be the residual sound of radio traffic from an ambulance or a police car the night Graham died. This is pure conjecture. We couldn't make anything out in the transmission. What do you think? In part two, we'll be interviewing eyewitnesses and staff. We will visit Cap Rock, where Graham Parsons' body was partially cremated. Kevin attempts to sing a Graham Parsons song. And we continue to investigate Room 8 as well as other rooms at the Joshua Tree Inn.